and welcome back to Colonial Airstream. I'm Patrick Botticelli and today I'm going to showcase the all new 2021 Airstream Interstate 19 and this is the four wheel drive version. So it also comes in two wheel drive. Four wheel drive is an upgrade uh, factory option. The exterior length is 19 foot 5 inches from bumper to bumper. Exterior height is 9 foot 7. Four wheel drive adds an additional 3 inches. Exterior width is 6 foot 4 and the interior width is five foot eight. Comes in three different exterior colors, metallic silver, black or white. Black and silver are an upgrade. Uh, white is the standard and there's four different interior colors that are standard. We have formal black, modern grige, luxe white, and refined brown. And there's an upgrade interior decor with the Tommy Bahama Relax Edition. What's great about something this size is that you could drive and park it pretty much anywhere and you could parallel park downtown. Let's take a look inside. The interior decor we're going to be showcasing today is the modern grease interior decor. So it has a gray beige seat and a charcoal color cabinet dark uh, black countertop and a light gray floor. The flooring material is woven vinyl flooring. This is woven vinyl that's embedded in a rubber mat. Airstream's floor, the subfloor, is an inch and a half thick and it's got insulation and it has uh, plywood uh, that's all sandwiched together to give you sound deadening material as well as extra insulation. We have a power entrance step here by the door. We have uh, Extruded aluminum piece here to prevent you from slipping on the way out. It has some grip tape here. If your toe of your shoe bump that, it'll prevent this from getting uh, scuffed. And then we have the body panels here, which gives the Airstream Interstate beautiful styling throughout. Best in class screen door. Airstream manufactures this screen door. This is exclusive to the Airstream brand here. It has some supports here in the middle and it's contoured to the shape of the van. So when you roll it back, the sliding door could actually shut. Uh, this happens to have the power sliding door and without interfering with the screen door. And it has this fuzzy piece here that fills the gap so insects cannot get inside. Let's take a look inside to get the lay of the land. <clears throat> if you notice on the Sprinter van chassis, it's very easy to get into the vehicle and there's a grab handle here on the door. Airstream equips these vans with a lot of Mercedes-Benz features. They pretty much check off all the boxes. One of them being power seats. So these seats you could adjust forward and backwards. You could put the back up and down. And what's nice about it is they have memory. So passenger one and two could set their settings on the seat and just press the button. But I set number three up to the position that the seat needs to be in to swivel. So if you just swivel the seat in any position, it would scuff up this door and rub on some interior trim. But if you set the seat in the position that allows it to swivel, program num number three to that position and that'll allow you to move the chair without it rubbing on anything. An Airstream sends these seats out and has them reupholstered and refoamed, so it gives you a lot more comfort than the standard Sprinter seat. So if you do sit in a standard uh, Mercedes-Benz cargo van, you'll see that the seats are not going to be as comfortable as what Airstream does. Also, these seats for longer legs, you could kick this part out, or if you're just lounging inside the van. The driver's seat swivels as well. Airstream also has a mat that they uh, give that's a floor mat, it's one piece for the whole front, and you get a floor mat that goes down the whole entire aisle throughout the back of the coach. Inside the van, right at the entry door, we have some controls, and Airstream likes to put a lot of the things and group them together. So they have the C-Zone system, and it's all touchscreen. So what you could do is you, there's a sleep mode, on board and away. So right now it's on the on board mode. It opens your blinds, turns on the lights, gets everything ready for you to use the coach. If you're going to go away for the day, all you have to do is hold away. That will shut down your blinds, shut down your lights, 
and keep it secure and keep the energy consumption down while you're out for the day. Now you can still run air conditioning, you still run refrigerator, those things will still run if you have them enabled. Uh, when you get on board, you just touch on board and then you can individually turn on and off different lights as you need them. So there's patio lights, galley lights, undercarriage lights. So underneath the van, there's illumination here, which looks pretty sharp at night. Uh, you definitely don't want to be driving around with them on them. I mean, you're going to be an attraction to police, but if you're parked at the campground, you could have that on there. And then there, when the awning goes out, there's even an awning light. So in the main menu here off to the side, we have, we're on the favorites mode. If you just want to go to the regular mode, that will give you uh, settings just for away, sleep, and on board. Then we can go to control mode. And this allows you to do a lot of different things inside the coach. Uh, you could dim and brighten lights. You could turn lights on and off individually. You could also start the generator. This is a 2.5 kW LP Onan. That's LP, liquefied petroleum. That's propane. Uh, you could start that from here. And then you could also go all the way down. You could put your awning in and out. So let's go to awning out and hit on. Now the power awning is going to come out. It's a vinyl material, LED light strip built in. This has two arms. If you go with the Grand Tour or Grand Lounge, a longer interstate, that's uh, 24 and a half foot long, it'll have three arms. And you can pause the awning in different positions, so you don't have to bring it all the way out if you didn't want to. But that's at the out position. Now this is a sunshade. This isn't a rain awning, all right? If you get a really big gust of wind, there's a seismic sensor built into it here. Now I'm gonna trick it and pretend that the wind just kicked up. Give it a little pound. And that will bring the awning back in. Now I wouldn't suggest doing that as your normal way to bring the awning in, but for demonstration purposes, this just shows you how effective it is if you get a big gust of wind. Behind the screen door here, there's a potable water fill. So this has an 18 gallon fresh water tank, a 16 gallon gray waste tank. Now gray waste would be your sink and shower waste. And then it has an eight gallon black waste tank. All those tanks are heated. This has a, a 12 volt heating system, heat pads on the tank chambers that prevents the tank from freezing if you get an unexpected drop in temperature at night. So if the temperature goes below freezing, this will give you a seven degree boost in temperature to protect your tank. The black tank is in the body, so as long as you have the heat on inside the coach, that black tank will be protected. It's just the fresh water and gray water that are underneath the coach that are heated with those 12 volt heat pads. This is also an access panel for uh, some plumbing if you ever needed some work. All the cabinetry is pliable with laminate, so there's no particle board in any of the construction. And quite different from a lot of other manufacturers, this is not a sticker, this is actually laminate. Back to the control panel. Over here, <clears throat> scroll down, you can then do if different shades individually up and down. So I could bring all shades down. I turn that on and all the shades will run down. There's a shade on each side of the bed, there's a shade behind the bed, and there's a shade on the sliding door. The cab area, there's cab window blinds that Airstream puts in. Now they're not built in with snaps, and they're not built in with accordion paper shades. This is an insulated shade system that reflects the sunlight outside and it gives you some insulation that doesn't take on heat or doesn't allow your heat to escape. And that goes across the whole front windshield here. The, mud, the sun visors hold it up. And then it also magnetic sticks to the side windows. So they're very, very effective and they come in a really nice Airstream carrying case that we'll see just in a few. Back over here. I'm going to put all the shades back up. We have a rear insect screen. We're going to get to see that when we go outside to the back, but let's bring it up and down to see what it looks like. So now you can see the shade is going down. 
and that will give you protection from insects from getting in if you have the back door kicked open while you're laying in bed. The next mode would be monitoring, and that will allow you to see uh, your engine battery, your rear battery. So there's two lithium iron phosphate 12 volt batteries that are 100 amp hours a piece back here. There's 250 watts of solar on the roof, and there's a 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter. Freshwater tank level, wastewater, gray waste, and propane. This has a 38.4 pound propane cylinder underneath. That would be equivalent almost to two barbecue sized 20 pound cylinders, giving an example. And the generator that's on board runs on that propane and you can run that generator for a nearly 30 hours straight on one full tank of propane. You could also uh, see your temperature on board because the Dometic air conditioner has a sensor. So this sensor here is for the air conditioning and this sensor here is for the Truma. The Truma is a 14,300 BTU uh, furnace and water heater. So it's like a tankless water heater on board. And that will heat this whole entire coach and heat your domestic hot water. On the larger interstates, because of the size of the van, they use a suburban uh, water heater, tankless water heater, and they use a separate furnace. On the smaller one, it's combined. Uh, you could go to climate here and I could turn on and off this vent fan. It has a fantastic fan on the roof. That's a 14 by 14 vent and it has a motorized lid. It has variable speed control, so I could change the different speeds on board. And then I could close the vent when I'm done. And then it has a rain sensor built into it, so if it did rain, that would sense it on a little circuit board up there and shut the van down. On the 13,500 Dometic rooftop air conditioner, I could turn it on and off from here and I could set my desired temperature. So instead of having dials on it that say warm and cool, it's all digitally controlled right here. And then another thing on here, you do have a separate control just for generator. I'll tell you your hours and you could start and stop it from here. Since we're indoors, I'm not going to start that right now. And then there's different uh, alarms you could set for low propane and tank levels. And then you could change your settings and the dimness and the brightness and uh, up, make updates from the bottom portion. The step hold feature. So every time you open and close the entry door, the step's going to come in and out. Well, if you're going to be set up at the campground for a day and you're only going to be using this door, you could disable it so the step stays out. So every time you open and close the door, the step doesn't come in and out. So step hold, you just turn that on and it disables the step. Now it will still go in if you start the engine. And there is a warning on the dashboard that will allow you to know that your step is out or your awning's not in all the way when you start the engine. So you wanna keep in mind if that does go off that one of these items might still be out. And then you have a main battery disconnect. So if you're all done using the coach and you wanna shut it down completely, you could hit the main battery disconnect and that will shut down the system. It will still allow the 250 watts of solar on the roof to charge the uh, 100 amp hour batteries, which gives you a total of 200 amp hours. There's an electrical outlet on board. Some outlets are powered off the inverter system. Some outlets are only powered when you're plugged into shore power. Uh, so you want to keep in mind what you're plugging in. Also, in order to run the rooftop air conditioning and the microwave, you either have to be plugged into the shore power connection or have the generator running. Those will not run off the battery system on board. There's a fire extinguisher put in an inset here. Airstream does pay attention, a lot of attention to detail on stuff like this because they know you're going to bump into it on the way in and out. And then you'll see how they transition the flooring material to the cab area. This is the rubber mat that Mercedes has. This is the nice floor mat that Airstream gives you. They put the extra skirts around the chairs just to dress up the uh, Mercedes-Benz boxes. There's D-rings here so you could do some tie-downs. That's part of the Mercedes-Benz. Um, you could also disable the motorized door and have it manually if you needed to. Um, behind me here, behind the driver's chair, is a lagoon table. So when we get to the back later, I'm going to show you how that sets up uh, so you could eat at that area. And then there's aisle lights uh, throughout. There's two aisle lights that illuminate the aisle at night or when you're driving. There's a furnace duct here for the Truma. And then 
this bathroom module here has solid oak corners that do that round. So instead of having a sharp edge in the laminate here, it's smooth. It's also more resilient so you don't have to worry about chipping it. The bathroom door has a signature porthole style that Airstream is uh, recognized with. Aluminum roof. This, uh, this is aluminum skin, so no headliner inside that uh, is easy to clean it won't sag down over time and then there's equal bad insulation between this ceiling and the roof of the van and then it has all led lights throughout swing the bathroom door around there's a little towel bar here all the showers abs plastic it's all sealed the sink is integrated into the mold but the actual sink bowl is removable if you ever had to replace it down the road. A shower faucet here pulls out and hangs up and that becomes your shower. In the bathroom, I'll just give you an idea, I'm five foot nine. I got plenty of room because we have a six foot two ceiling height in this van. So keep that in mind if you're over six foot, you could still sand in an Airstream Interstate 19. The bathroom mirror, has magnification side or regular side for you. There's a clothesline that pulls across and hooks in and you can lock it in place. You can hang light items from here. There's LED lights up top here. And then all the way over here, there's a vent line fan. You could push this up and down and push the button and that will vent out. But what's really cool is there's a halo ring here that's a light, it's an LED light, and there's a sensor on the wall, so every time you open the bathroom door, this sensor will know and illuminate this area, instead of having to turn on the big, bright ceiling lights that are on board. Down on the floor, we have a drain here. Uh, it's, it's covered, it's removable, so you can clean it up, but instead of just a round drain, it's more stylish, more functional. And the bathroom sink has a drain plug built into it so it allows you to fill this with water if you needed to the toilet paper holder here is on the wall it's water resistant so you have your toilet paper inside when you close that it keeps the water out the shower curtain pulls across on a rail and velcros in and that keeps this area dry because there's seams and gaps here for the door so you don't get any water in your aisle but everything's tapered so it goes properly down the drain the toilet is put in on an angle so it's easier to use and then there's a foot pedal here off to the side with a ball valve and that will allow your waist to drop down and then you can put your foot partially on the pedal and that will fill the bowl up for you to your desired height. You just want to drain that down before you drive, otherwise you have a water splashing around. And then each one of these cylinders here, you can remove the cover, bring them in the house and fill it with uh, shampoo, conditioner, uh, and body wash here. And the shower area is very spacious, so there is enough room to wash your hair and towel down in here. I recommend instead of using full-size towels, to use hand towels. Hand towels are easier to fold and store when you're camping. They dry a lot quicker. And with this amount of room, just whipping a big towel around in here, uh, the smaller towers work best. And I do that in my own personal Airstream. It was a game changer for me. I had that aha moment when I ran out of my full-size towels and had to use a hand towel. It just worked so much better. So now that's all I do. The MSRP of this unit uh, total with the options that this has, and I'll go through all of them individually, is 177, 144. How did we get there? The base MSRP is 161.904. The paint exterior, the silver paint upgrade, is $1,260. I do recommend that. It's a really nice upgrade. The silver is a very forgiving color. Uh, hides dirt nice and easy, and it's all together. It's an upgraded paint material than the standard white paint that Mercedes offers. And then the lithium iron phosphate battery upgrade is 2470, and that does a really nice job upgrading the battery system from the AGM batteries we had uh, before. So that is listed as an option, even though it's a forced option, now you can only get them that way. 
And then the last is the four wheel drive upgrade is 9860. Uh, it's a really nice uh, upgrade. You get a little bit higher ground clearance and ability to do inclement weather and unimproved roads. And then the national destination charge is $1,650. So that's the breakdown of the price. There is no other available options that you could get on the 19, except for through parts and service. There's a bed system, a cab area bed system. You could get to sleep a child up front if you wanted to. In the galley, there is a undermount stainless steel sink with a cover that gives you a lot more counter space. It's nice and flush if you want to do some prep. Has a separate faucet with pull out, hot and cold water here. This pulls out, we have a drawer here. Airstream utilizes the space because the drain for the sink occupies this area it is to cut a little notch, but they give you the full depth here for the silverware organizer. They give you some tools with it. We give you hands-on training at our dealership when you come to pick these up, and we'll go through and teach you how everything works. First timers, it takes about two to three hours for us to train you. We always recommend spending the night at our dealership after your orientation, so you can do your shakedown. If you have additional questions the following morning, you're still on the property, we could take care of it for you. If you need any adjustments on anything, we could take care of that before you hit the road and head back. Down below, these two flip open all the way. We have a trash pail inside and plenty of storage on board. This pulls out, we got a drawer. You can see the J latch here. And then all the plywood here is Italian light ply. It's uh, poplar and it's a very light material, but it's very thick, robust, and uh, very resilient, doesn't warp easily. Uh, so that's what Airstream uses. Two burner cooktop, we have a high output here, low one here, and then you could just turn it to light. You push that in, hit the igniter, and that will ignite up. And then it's recommended to use your fantastic fan when you're cooking. And you don't want to cook on top of this. You know, this is just a cover. You cook here. Uh, so you just want to make sure you don't make that mistake. Next to the cooktop, there's a leaf extension here to give you a little bit more prep space. So if you're, you're cooking some stuff, you want to take something out of this contour microwave, you have ability to do so. Again, this will only run when you're operating your generator or plugged into shore power, as well as your air conditioner. Talking about the air conditioner, there's filters here. They get clogged pretty quick with lint. Small van, Two people inside, you're going to get some lint. It's going to get right into these filters. You can slide them out and wash them out. That will make your air conditioning run more efficiently. And if you have them completely clogged, you could damage your air conditioning. So you want to make sure you check those. You can divert the air out the sides and the front back. You can dump air straight down if you want to. The refrigerator, this is the Norcold. This is a 12 volt compressor style refrigerator. And ever since Airstream started putting these in, in the vans in 2008, it was a game changer. Prior to that, there was propane refrigerators. It had vents on the outside with fans. The vents made a lot of wind noise when you're driving, always a potential to have rain come in. So when the compressor refrigerators were first started, it really helped improve the product. And now we see them used in a lot of different Airstream products. But this is 2.95 cubic foot in the refrigerator compartment and it's 0.25 cubic foot for the freezer compartment. It's controlled right up here. You could turn it on and off using this button. You just have to hold it in for a second. And there's different settings for cold, cold, coldest. Uh, in the middle is about what you need to be, unless it's a 95 degree day. And then there will be a compressor and a fan noise on board. If that did potentially bother someone at night, you could put it in night mode and that lowers everything. Because they know at night you're not opening and closing the door every hour. Uh, so the door is going to be mostly shut. So you could put it in night mode and they could turn it off once you wake up in the morning. And one thing, one little tip here, after you're done with your trip and you empty your items out of the fridge, it's best practice to let it air out, let it dry out before you close the door because you'd be surprised how moldy it will get in a very quick amount of time if you forget to dry it out. And uh, these refrigerators use low amperage, so the battery system on board and the solar panel on board, you can run these refrigerators all the time. Your alternator will be charging the batteries as well when you're driving. But if you get a few days of cloud coverage, it would be best practice to plug the coach in or shut the refrigerator off. This is a slide out pantry that's on board. And there's another furnace duct here. 
This is a, a CO and propane gas alarm. So this is a combination, if you have a gas leak or propane uh, leak or carbon dioxide on board, this is gonna alert. Sometimes if you start the diesel engine with the sliding door open, some diesel fumes might come in and set this off and you'll know exactly what's going on. Another aisle light here off to the side. And then there's flip down storage uh, access to uh, the fuses. So this is all the breakers on board for your electrical and all the 12 volt fuses here. And there's also an onboard battery charger, which is under the driver's, I'm sorry, passenger seat. If one of these fuses was to blow for malfunction, there would be a red LED light next to it to illuminate that that particular fuse had a problem. Over on each side of the sofa lounge, there's USB charging ports, electrical outlet here. That's all on, uh, power off the inverter. So if you're driving on the road and someone wants to sit back here and operate the television or laptop computer, you do have inverter outlets on board you can turn on. And the inverter turns on and off from the central control. There's cup holders here off to the side. And then there's premium ultra leather here. Very comfortable on the 19 foot there's a three-point shoulder harness on either side on the 24-foot model. There'll be lap belts across, and there's a lap belt in the middle here. 24-foot will give you headrests, and a 19-foot to low back. These armrests are removable. Great material here on the wall. When the shades come down, and they're, they're night shades, night privacy shades, they'll fit flush with this box. They make very little noise when you're driving, which is great. Um, there's an electrical outlet hidden up top here. There's two speakers here. There's a subwoofer on board. Great sound system. It's the Mercedes-Benz stereo. Extruded aluminum cabinet structure here. Everything's bolted together. Pocket hole screws on the wood. Very durable. Premium hardware here. Has a spring to keep the door open, spring to keep the door shut. Airstream lines the cabinetry, so anything shuffling around in here is not going to make noise. Uh, plus the fact that this is a more resilient. If you do laminate, things will be scratching it back and forth when you're driving. Smoke detector up top here. A little bit of storage back here. This happened to be, this is the owner's bag with all the owner's manuals that you get. <clears throat> On this side, additional storage and more storage up here and this is the controls for the inverter this is uh, uh lets you know if you have 30 amp coming in this there's a key on board these batteries have heat pads built into them so if you get below a certain temperature you shouldn't be charging lithium iron phosphate batteries it's dangerous to the battery and, and it's dangerous altogether so uh, you could turn the battery heat on once the threshold drops below a certain temperature uh, the heat will come on in the battery and that will heat the battery up to the proper temperature so then it can take on a charge. It could take on a charge off your alternator, it could take on a charge off your solar panel or take on a charge from the shore power or on the generator. So there's lots of different ways to charge. You just have to remember if it's really cold out you want to turn those heaters on before you start charging it. And there's, it's a key so you can turn it on and off so you know when you turned it on and off. And you don't want to leave it on unnecessarily as well because that could drain the batteries down. Uh, we, there's a controller here for the Victron uh, control board for the solar panels that are on the roof. And then you could operate the Truma from here and you go through all the different settings. So uh, this Truma, you know, it does do the room temperature as well as the hot water. And then you have a choice of either propane or electric or both. And then electric, there's one element or two elements. So you have a lot of different choices to heat the water up a lot quicker. And there's a fan speed setting here. Uh, for the Truma furnace as well. And then that's what your temperature, so we could turn up to Truma and get up to room, our temperature that's in now. Our, and then once we're in that, I could uh, turn the hot water on, put it put on boost if I, I wanna get the water hot really quick. And then I could turn on gas. I can mix gas and electric or mix gas and two elements of electric. So once you get into one of those items, you could do a lot of different controls within it and then you can hit back to the main. Uh, another C-zone control, just like the one at the entry door, but if you're back here, you don't have to reach all the way around the front, especially if someone's prepping in the kitchen, you're not gonna be in their way. 
The television is on an articulating arm that allows you to swivel it all the way around. So if you are in the driver and passenger seat, you could see the television or you can position it center of the bed in the back. And then below the television, there's a cubby here that gives you access to electrical outlet, cable. If you ever decided to do satellite, there's a way to hook the satellite up and you could turn on the, the television antenna from here as well. So it's all tucked up away, nice and discreet. Next to the TV, there's another USB port. And then above the TV, there's another light that illuminates this area for night. And then over here, there's a wardrobe. These shelves are removable and it's 12 inches wide on the inside, just over 30 inches high. There's a wardrobe rod up top if you needed to hang shirts. I find a lot of my customers just fold their shirts. It's a lot easier to manage. And then there's a bright LED light in this compartment here. The windows in the back for ventilation, this side, because the sliding door comes up, this is a solid window. The back windows have to be solid. But this side, there's crank out windows. So you could crank these awning style windows all the way out. You have insect screens here. And then again, the, the nightshade that comes down to give you privacy. For sleeping, the bed is 66 inches wide by 72 inches long. And to operate the bed, you have some controls here. And we always recommend doing one at a time. So the lounge, we'll start with that. We're gonna bring the lounge down. And what's nice is it squeezes nice and tight up against this cushion here. So these are not like just cushions on boxes. This is a whole seat mechanism on the motor. So it's, it's very stable and very comfortable. Me being five foot nine, I'll give you an example. Now normally you wouldn't have your shoes on, but there's plenty of room and plenty of width here. You can actually put three people across if you wanted to. What's nice about this is if you leave this section out, it's easier to get out of bed at night to run and use the restroom. But if you decided that you wanted these combined, that's what the ottoman switches are for. So you could press that and the backrest is loose and that slips down, it fits nice and tight there. And then on this side, the other ottoman can operate that. And the same thing, the backrest will flip down. This squeezes nice and tight and you got one continuous mattress across. And then when you're done, you just lift these backrests up so they're not out of the way. Otherwise you'll squeeze them against the wall. And then you operate the ottomans one at a time. Now let's set up the dinette table for the back. There's a clamp here in the wall, keeps it nice and tight. So when you're driving, it's not moving around. It's pretty lightweight. It's a lagoon table. I have one of my own personal Airstream. Actually, both of my Airstreams have these. We'll bring it back here and we'll assemble it. <clears throat> so there's a few pieces and it's like a ratchet, but you have to pull these and twist and then push in and pull and twist. That loosens it for you. So this piece right here is for the table arm. This piece will loosen here and that's for the leg. This slides into the track here. Just gotta make sure your bed is put back all the way and then we'll bring it up and we'll lock it in place and that's tight enough. And then this piece will drop on. Okay. And now I could swivel the table around. So if I'm sitting right here, I got a beautiful view doing my work and I wanna get out of my chair, I can just push it out and get right out. Same thing if uh, someone was sitting on the other side, they have ability to. These are you could sit on when you're parked, but they're not made for people to sit in when the vehicle's in motion. It's actually stitched right on here. But this table, if you tighten it up nice and tight, you can leave it there when you're driving around. Uh, so you don't have to put it away, but it is always recommend if you're going on rough roads to put everything that you could possibly put away uh, while you're driving. Let's take a look at the outside because there's a lot of cool things I want to show you before we get to the cab area. Outside, I'll show you here in the passenger seat, this flips down and this is where the actual inverter system, the battery charger, everything is built in under here. It's a service access. So if a technician needs to get access, this is where we're going to go. They don't have to tear your furniture apart to get this stuff like that. There's a uh, 
emergency uh, uh, strobe here that you can put on the side of the road if uh, you have a flat tire or something like that and you need repair just to make it more visible. And then there's also a first aid kit here in the door section, Mercedes-Benz one. This is the engine exhaust. This is single rear wheel. So this van has a 9,050 pound GBWR, it's single rear wheel, 144 inch wheelbase. That's what makes it so easy to maneuver in uh, tight areas like downtown parallel parking. There's an outside GFCI protected electrical outlet on board that uh, will power up once you have your generator shore power on. Below that is access to the propane fill that we talked about earlier. This is where you'd actually take the cap off and have the propane attendant fill it for you. There's a bleeder valve that they would use. And then there's a quick disconnect. In the back doors of the coach, there's a propane line. It's about three foot. They could hook up to a low pressure grill for a camping stove. And you could turn, once you get that snapped in, you could turn that gas on for that item. And then the tank itself is inboard. And instead of turning a valve on and off, it has a, a solenoid here that allows you to turn the tank on and off remotely. In the back bumper, there's parking sensors here. There's 3M film on the top of the bumper, so if you load things in and out, you don't scuff it. This plastic piece comes off, and that gives you your hitch receiver, so you can tow up to 5,000 pounds and up to a 5,000 pound hitch weight. Back door is open. Airstream has the shade for the back doors on the inside. Instead of boxing these in and making the windows smaller, they leave it the full size, and then when you need privacy, the shade runs along this inside of it. There's a power cord adapter that goes, allows you to plug a 30 amp coach into a regular household outlet, so you could charge it, use your outlets, and run your microwave. You can't run your air conditioning off, uh, it's, it's not enough amperage. The power cord that comes in, with the coach is a full 30 amp connection. So if you plug that into a campground, you have full use of all the items on board. This is the propane quick disconnect hose. On this side, this is an outside shower connection. So when we get up on the other side, you'll see where you plug this in, but it's a little sprayer and a quick disconnect here. It's really nice, all the pockets that they have and you know they're really nicely laid out. This is the subwoofer that we talked about for the JBL subwoofer. And then I mentioned the mat that goes throughout the whole inside of the coach. So you roll this down the aisle and you get a wall to wall carpeting there. And then you could take this out and clean it and, and vacuum it off separately. Um, some people use them, some people don't, but it isn't, it is available. It comes with it. This is the cab window blind that I mentioned earlier. Check these things out. Look how thick they are. It reflects the sunlight. You have insulation in here. Really makes a big difference when you have these up if you're camping overnight somewhere and it's really cold, or if you're out in the sunlight and you parked and you want to keep the coach cooler. Comes in a nice case. A lot of the details that Airstream has, I just don't see elsewhere. You know, the, the case that that comes with, that's an Airstream thing, and they really do have that extra attention to detail. This is a manual disconnect switch for the battery system. We have the remote switch there by the door, but you can manually do it if you really need it to. And then this is an access panel uh, for the Truma that's on board. Up top, we have a rear backup camera. Uh, there's, uh, that's part of the Mercedes-Benz chassis. And then there's side cameras on these coaches too. So when you turn on your turn signal, you could see down the side of the coach and see who's coming along alongside of you. Just close these doors in order because the Mercedes badge hangs over this side. So you wanna close that first and then close that one around. And these hinges fold all the way around up to here. So you got 180 inch, uh, 180 degree hinge. This is the shore power connection. LED light lights up, lets you know you have power coming in. You could twist lock it here. And it's got a nice metal door on it. Generator exhaust, these have the new generation Onan generator, ultra quiet propane. That's a, a mid-year model improvement that Airstream did. Uh, definitely a lot quieter when you're running it, a little bit more stealth. 
This is the city water connection. City water connection allows you to hook up water to the coach and get water pressure to all your plumbing on board. It doesn't fill your freshwater tank. We saw the freshwater tank behind the screen door before. That's where you fill that. So in order to use that, you got to turn on your onboard water pump to give you demand water pressure. So you turn on a faucet, it'll see a drop in pressure, kick on the pump and give you ample water pressure. You shut the faucet off, system pressurizes, shuts the pump off automatically. This would just be whatever water pressure is coming in, that's what you're getting out of your faucet. The generator itself occupies the space behind the rear axle, so where Mercedes-Benz would normally put a spare tire, this is prepped to put a generator in its place. So it sits right there. You're going to follow the manufacturer's recommendations for runtime and uh, oil changes. You got to keep in mind about that. It's another motor that's on board. Aluminum Mercedes-Benz rims. Truma exhaust is here. This is the compartment that houses the macerator pump reel so you could pull this thing out it's about 15 foot and then you could put different fittings on it for all different types of dump stations so I have one at my house and I could actually thread mine in and then I would be able to snap this hose in put the lock collar on the end but if you don't have a threaded fitting you could use the rubber donut and that will slip in and you slip this into that and it'll give you a nice connection once you get it all hooked up then you could open this valve so any residual waste that's sitting in this tube could drain out and then from there you open up this compartment and this gives you access to open the black tank valve and the gray waste valve black tank is always best practice to do first all any toilet water toilet paper that when you open this up sits up against the macerator pump, which we'll turn on next. All right, that's all whatever's in there. Okay, now, once you're done emptying the black tank, now you know, this is just water and RV antifreeze, so you wouldn't do this on the ground, you'd have it connected. Now you wanna clean it out with gray waste, right? That's this sink and shower waste. Open that up. That opens the gate, allows the discharge to get up against the macerator pump, and you can turn that on, and that will then uh, clean out your waste hose. And then once you're all done and you have the gates closed, you close this off so nothing drips out when you're rolling it away, and you can put it away in this compartment. After you're, you're all done and you're done camping and you empty the waste tanks, I'll leave the black tank open first before you get to the gray then you could hook up a garden hose to this connection here and this will flush out the inside of the tank and any of that residual waste that's inside the tank off the walls of the tank and then when the gates open and the pumps on will allow it to discharge out if you hook something up to here and you forget to open the black tank and forget to put the pump on it'll build up so much pressure in the tank it could flood out your toilet so you want to keep in mind and then there's a service light here that eliminates this area and this area at night so you can see what you're doing your cable if you go to a campground you want to go hook up to their cable you could run it through this hole and plug it into the coach there and then when you're all done you want to put all this away there's a real retract that rolls up sometimes you just have to fish it in back and forth so it doesn't bunch up and then we'll take the fittings off you don't always have to take the fittings off i'm just going to take them off to make it neat and then this fits up in here just need a little bit more slack so i could close the door over here is the shower hot and cold water quick disconnect hook up that hose and, and spray off whatever items you want to spray off. Open the driver's door gives us access to the fuel tank, 24 and a half gallon diesel tank. This requires DEF fluid. There's a DEF reservoir underneath the hood. And uh, this is ultra low sulfur diesel fuel. Never leave the engine running when you're fueling because it will trip the check engine light. And then there's information here with Airstream serial number that's separate from the VIN number and your tire information with tire size and tire pressure recommendation. Underneath this seat is all the fuses that Mercedes-Benz gives you uh, for all their devices. And then really underneath this seat is a battery tender. So when you're plugged into shore power, uh, it will 
not only charge your back batteries, there's a battery tender that will keep the engine battery charged. The engine battery is underneath the floor here. There's a tool kit on the passenger side footwell that has a driver to take this trim off. And then once you take that off, you can lift up the mat and get to the engine battery if you need to change it. And then Airstream, when they check off all the boxes, they got a lot of cool features. Like this has power retracting mirrors. This has heated seats. Uh, this has collision avoidance, adaptive cruise control, uh, blind spot sensors. Oh, there's a lot of safety features that Airstream provides you, plus the upgraded instrument cluster and uh, the steering wheel control. So there's lots of different things you could do here. And there's a lot of videos online of just the Mercedes Sprinter chassis that you could watch to learn more about the cab area. One cool thing that Airstream does a little bit different is they add these mirrors here. Uh, that doesn't come with the Mercedes-Benz, so the driver and passenger could uh, look in the mirror if they need to check on things. And then they also put in a separate stereo. So instead of having to use the Mercedes stereo when you're camping, you can have this whole cab area shut off and then use the up stereo that's up top there for entertainment in the back. You see it here, this is a step. This is a huge windshield. This allows you to step up so you can clean your windshield. And in the windshield, you'll see there's all different cameras and sensors there for the adaptive cruise control. So you want to make sure there's no bugs or any debris on that because that will disable those systems. Lifting up the hood, there's a prop rod here off to the side. This is the intake for the fresh air into the cab when you have your HVAC running. This is the def fluid fill. So there's a gauge in the cluster. Uh, so there's like, there's no dipsticks for stuff. So everything's controlled digitally. You could see your engine oil level, and engine oil life, your def fluid level, all from the instrument cluster. This is a reservoir for the radiator overflow, oil fill, air filter, master cylinder, washer fluid, and then the oil filters right here. This is where you could jumpstart the engine. So this is the positive and the negative post is here off to the side. So if the engine battery went bad, you could jumpstart from out here instead of taking the whole driver's floor up. And uh, upgraded LED high performance headlights, we've got fog lamps on board. And then Airstream even puts their branding here in this front spoiler lip. This cap could come off here and allows you to screw a hook in if you need to get towed out of a ditch. And where all those tools are, they're right in this compartment. So I can use a key here as a screwdriver to turn these. And that will allow this floor area to come up. And that gives me access. And there's the hook I talked about. There's a screwdriver I mentioned. The lug wrench. There's another screwdriver attachment. All in this compartment here. Airstream gives you roadside assistance. It's called CoachNet that comes with the van. So if you do get a flat tire and you need help, you could call the CoachNet number. The dealer will provide you with that information. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. This Airstream is available at Colonial Airstream. Our website is colonialairstream.com. Our telephone number is 800 265-9019. Make sure you follow us on social with Colonial Airstream on Facebook and Instagram. And I'm Patrick, and we'll see you soon.